It's a pleasure to be here with the Massachusetts small business community from Cape Cod to Greenfield, from Lowell to Blackstone Valley, and all across the Commonwealth. Today, we will learn how small businesses can participate in the clean energy economy and cut their energy bills thanks to funding and tax incentives from the Inflation Reduction Act and other federal programs. A special thanks to Nicole Obi, CEO of the Black Economic Council of Massachusetts, Rachel McCleary, Senior Advisor in the uh, IRA uh, Program Office at the Department of Treasury, David Brown, Director of Policy and Planning for the Small Business Administration of our country. And I also um, want to recognize uh, Shagun um, Idowo, uh, Chief of Economic Opportunity and Inclusion for the City of Boston. Uh, he's just uh, known by one name, uh, Shagun, uh, and Bob Nelson, District director for the Small Business Administration's Massachusetts office. So both of them can help your business take the next step. The Small Business Administration also has two important events coming up. Uh, May 3rd in Springfield at the Basketball Hall of Fame and May 7th in Worcester at Holy Cross. My staff will share more details following today's webinar. Today's panelists will discuss how small businesses can take advantage of clean energy incentives, from the Inflation Reduction Act, funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law and lending programs from the Small Business Administration. There are millions, billions of dollars uh, which are out there and they're intended to help entrepreneurs build and expand their businesses and cutting their costs at the very same time. So what this webinar will cover is incentives for small businesses to buy clean cars and trucks improve energy efficiency, and install heat pumps, rooftop solar, or electric vehicle charging stations. And that means that a local restaurant can lower its electricity bill by installing rooftop solar. Or the corner store down the street can buy electric delivery vehicles and install charging stations, allowing shoppers to charge up while they grab groceries uh, for the week. In addition to cutting energy costs funding, from the Inflation Reduction Act and the infrastructure bill are creating new jobs and new businesses. So in Massachusetts, we know the importance of investing in entrepreneurs. We have built an ecosystem of innovation where startups and small businesses are creating the technologies that are transforming our world. We need clean energy entrepreneurs to supply, install, and maintain the technology and infrastructure that are the foundation of our clean energy economy. We're investing in our communities across the Commonwealth. And thanks to these clean energy investments, we're also investing in a livable, sustainable, and profitable future. One where business owners won't have to fear being regularly shut down by extreme storms or seeing energy bills skyrocket as a result of foreign upheaval. So all of you, our community business leaders, will be the builders of our future. So I thank you for joining us today. Uh, there's money, there's money out there uh, that can help you in your businesses. And that's why we're doing this webinar. So I just want to uh, thank you all so much. And uh, now I'm going to introduce uh, Nicole, Nicole uh, Obi, President and CEO of the Black Economic Council of Massachusetts, uh, who is, um, a huge leader all uh, across the Commonwealth. And she's going to just already explain how businesses uh, can be uh, helped in the clean vehicle um, sector. So uh, thank you, Nicole. Take it away. Thank you, Senator Markey. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am, again, the President CEO of the Black Economic Council of Mass, or we go by BECMA, um, and I'm incredibly grateful to be part of this important discussion today about information about in order to provide information to businesses, particularly small and diverse businesses, so that they can take advantage of all the opportunities uh, to gain entry into the sustainability and clean energy space. Um, 
I want to express my sincere gratitude to Senator Mark and his team for inviting me to join this panel. Um, so thank you so much. I'm happy to share a bit more about BECMA and what we're doing to help transition businesses into the clean energy space, making sure they have access to the resources available and share one of our success stories. Next slide, please. For those that are not familiar with the Black Economic Council of Mass, I'll briefly share that our history uh, really starts with the 2015 Federal Reserve Bank of Boston Colored Wealth Study. Uh, that study found that the median net worth of Black Boston households was $8, and that's in comparison to white Boston households in Massachusetts at the time of over $247,000. And a small group of black business leaders came together and formed BECMA to really um, address uh, some of the issues. Now, uh, we're a statewide member based uh, organization which conducts advocacy, programming, and events. And simply put, our mission is to build black wealth. Next slide, please. We do this through. Oh, one, one, yes, we do this through our four pillars, um, which are placement, which is about putting um, black people in the Massachusetts growth economy, especially into the climate space, also in decision making roles on boards and commissions. We uh, do this through commerce, which is about inclusive procurement and contracting, working with both sides of the deals, the buyers and the bidders. We do this through advocating for greater ownership, whether it's home ownership or helping our business owners get a greater equity stake in the firms that they run. And we do this through entrepreneurship, which is really about helping to make sure that our entrepreneurs get access to adequate and affordable capital. Next slide, please. Well, Massachusetts black owned firms spend dozens of industries. What they have in common is their small size. And given that the number one issues our entrepreneurs face is the lack of back office capabilities, which would allow them to be efficient, effective, and compliant. So we created the Back Office Support Services Program, or BOSS, to address these needs through professional services, digital solutions, and non-dilutive working capital grants. Um, BOSS is our most utilized resource for our members, and BOSS enables businesses to hire staff, purchase equipment and inventory, subscribe to platforms for digital marketing or digital payments platforms. Um, they can hire an accountant, a lawyer, they can increase their insurance coverage and more. In 2023 alone, we supported over 400 black led firms through our boss program. And for many, we're the first beyond their friends and family to provide them with any sort of financial support. Next slide, please. At BECMA, we believe that the pace of climate sustainability, um, whether it's the adoption or the adaptation, will be determined by how quickly and effectively we engage small businesses and getting them into this ecosystem. So given that, in 2021, we have been focused on transitioning small and diverse businesses into the electric vehicle charging industry through our electric vehicle Kickstarter workshops and programs. Our EV program is meant to do two things. One is raise the awareness about the opportunities for businesses to enter and thrive in the EV charging sector as either an owner operator, a distributor of charging stations, installer or maintenance providers. Our other goal is that we are piloting, accelerating 20 Massachusetts businesses into transitioning into the emerging EV charging sector. We're doing this so we can create a program which is repeatable and scalable, whether it's an EV charging space or other clean tech spaces. It's taking existing business owners and helping them make a transition. Next slide, please. Our first success of accelerating a small business is a company called Better Together Brain Trust, or BT2. This is a minority and woman-owned firm in Massachusetts that provides turnkey solutions for EV charging. They're based in Newbean Square in the Roxbury neighborhood of Boston, and they serve the New England area. 
And this firm began as a result of BECMA's initial electric vehicle kickstarted in 2021, where the founders and principal business owners met. The firm that they've created together is now nearly one year old, and it has won more EV charging contracts than any of the individual firms could have or would have won on their own. BECMA brought together these principals, coached them, hired consultants for them, backed them financially, and advocated for contract awards. Now they serve as a model for accelerating small businesses into the climate and sustainability space. Our goal is to do this in a scalable and sustainable way and to be sure that these firms are given the right support like incentives, lending, and other resources. So we're incredibly grateful for the IRA and other supports available for small businesses to transition into the clean energy economy. Next slide, please. Now, I'll just end by saying, if you're interested in becoming a member of BECMA or learning more about BECMA and the work we do, please visit, please visit us at BECMA.org or scan the QR code. And I again wanna thank Senator Markey and his team. They've been great supporters of BECMA and our members. BECMA has previously received a federal earmark because of Senator Markey for our back office support of FOSS program. And we are, con we are eternally grateful for the support. We look forward to learning more about resources for small businesses from the other presenters this afternoon. Katie, I'll turn it to you. Thank you so much, Nicole. That was fantastic. Um, and we really appreciate you being here today. So our next speaker that we'll hear from is Rachel McCleary. She's a senior advisor in the Treasury's IRA program office. So um, she'll be presenting today about clean energy tax incentives. So we'll pull her slides up on the screen and then Rachel, you can take it away. Thank you. Great, thank you for the introduction, Katie. And hi everyone, happy Small Business Week. Uh, as Katie shared and Senator Markey, my name is Rachel McCleary. I'm a senior advisor in the Inflation Reduction Act Program Office. And, we, and that's where I lead stakeholder engagement across all of the roughly 20 new and modified IRA clean energy tax provisions. And this office was established early last year uh, in response, of course, to the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act in August of 22. And our uh, directive is focusing on effective and equitable implementation and providing resources, education, and tools for those who'd like to participate in this green future that the IRA is creating. Uh, thank you so much to Senator Markey and to, to Senator Markey's staff for inviting me to provide an update today on all of the IRA credits of interest to small businesses. I really appreciate those of you who are taking time out of your busy Thursday to virtually join us today. Next slide, please. So the Inflation Reduction Act makes the largest investment in clean energy in our nation's history. And much of that investment is delivered via tax incentives. And as the federal agency responsible for administering the tax code, we at Treasury are proud to be playing a central role in implementation. The IRA includes a wide range of tax incentives. Senator Markey uh, did a great job of providing some of those real, real world examples, uh, but there are incentives for everything from household items like heat pumps and electric vehicles to massive utility scale clean energy projects. The law supports established technologies like wind and solar, as well as emerging technologies like clean hydrogen. And it invests in our full clean energy value chain so that we have a robust, resilient supply of components and the materials that we need in order to uh, be part of this future. The IRA also includes certain cross-cutting provisions and bonuses that apply to multiple incentives. That's anywhere from labor standards to benefit workers and place-based bonuses to expand economic opportunity in energy communities and low-income communities. Next slide, please. And the work that we're doing here at the Treasury Department can really be summarized into three buckets of work. Uh, first, we're quickly developing and issuing tax guidance to provide clarity and certainty around how the law's tax incentives will operate in practice. We're also working with the IRS to put in place modern, streamlined processes for taxpayers to claim the clean energy incentive. We know this is particularly important to the small business community who has a unique relationship when it comes to engaging with the IRS but we know that when we have a strong and funded IRS that these tax credits that I'll be talking about today um, have a, a greater chance of success and uptake. And finally, uh, the work that I'm really focused on, conducting stakeholder engagement and outreach to inform our approach and to educate the public about the benefits that are now available. Next slide, please. So 
So th this presentation is essentially broken down into five buckets of incentives. Some may apply to you, some may not, but I hope that you walk away with some connection of the type of incentive you might be able to take advantage of. First, there's energy generation, then there's manufacturing. We also have vehicle incentives, energy efficiency, and fuels and carbon capture incentives. And before um, highlighting um, some, before I uh, go to some of the cost and bonus pieces, I'll also provide um, an overview of four provisions that have the ability to impact the value of these tax credits. Now, don't worry, I really, this is quite a bit of content, but this deck is available for circulation, and I'll be sure the Markey team has a copy to share with you all following today's presentation. Next slide, please. Before I get into it, I do need to briefly hit on a few legal disclaimers. Uh, the deck that I'll be reviewing today does provide an overview of IRA tax provisions for general informational purposes only. This is not itself tax guidance. The deck also relies on some simplifications and generalizations to convey high level points about IRA tax provisions. Ultimately, you need to refer to guidance issued by the IRS for detailed information on the rules associated with those tax provisions. And where applicable, Treasury and the IRS will carefully consider feedback submitted during the public comment periods for proposed and temporary regulations before issuing final rules. Next slide. Okay, so with that, let's first talk about energy generation. So while there are a variety of credits listed here, in the interest of time and where I think um, which credits are most applicable for those on the phone, I'm going to focus on the investment tax credit and production tax credit. Until the IRA, the main incentive to build and deploy clean power in the U.S., those two credits, had been subject to short-term extensions that made it hard for developers and project owners to invest with confidence, invest with certainty. The IRA provides long-term clarity and certainty around clean power generation tax incentives to spur a massive, sustained build-out of clean power in the years to come. So the ITC, that's the investment tax credit, provides a tax credit for investment in renewable energy projects while the production tax credit, or the PTC, provides a tax credit for the production of electricity from renewable resources. So the ITC provides a credit of 30% of the amount spent on systems like solar panels, inverters, transformers, circuit breaks, and energy storage devices. Organizations of all sizes, including small businesses, can take advantage of the ITC if they own their solar system. Treasury released guidance that provides clarity for small-scale projects that need to connect to the grid, in addition to those entities and organizations leading offshore wind and battery storage products. The production and investment tax credits have been further strengthened by the introduction of labor standards and bonuses. And I would also note on the topic of ITC that there's an incentive now available for standalone energy storage. In 2025, the law directs the Secretary of the Treasury to update annually a list of zero emissions energy technologies that will be eligible to receive the incentives. So this means that as new innovations emerge, Treasury will be able to quickly recognize those innovations as eligible for incentives rather than requiring Congress to pass a new law, once again, um, emphasizing the importance of those small and startup businesses uh, to be part of this future that the IRA is helping to build. Next slide, please. Okay, next up, the incentives for clean energy manufacturing. In order to build a more robust, resilient, and inclusive clean energy supply chain, the law includes two incentives to specifically build out manufacturing capabilities in the U.S. The Advanced Manufacturing Production Tax Credit, also known as 45X, and the Advanced Energy Project Credit, known as 48C. The first one, the Advanced Energy Project Credit, provides an investment tax credit of up to 30% for investments in clean energy technology, manufacturing and recycling, industrial decarbonization, and critical materials processing, refining, and recycling. Now, 48C, this is an allocated credit, meaning that interested parties must apply and be approved. There is a maximum of $10 billion available uh, in funding that will be allocated. And very importantly, of the $10 billion available, at least $4 billion must go to projects in certain energy communities. And just yesterday, actually, Treasury announced guidance for the next round of applications. It will be its second and final round to allocate the remaining $6 billion in funding, which will open to concept paper submissions no later than May 28th. DOE and Treasury will be hosting a webinar for prospective applicants on May 16th. So if you are on the line, if you're participating in this webinar and you're in the clean energy manufacturing business, uh, be sure to register. I'll make sure Team Markey has that information that they can pass along to you. And next, there's the Advanced Manufacturing Production Credit, which provides incentives to produce solar and wind components, inverters, battery components, and critical minerals. A wide range of materials qualify here. 
Uh, 45X is a per unit tax credit for each clean energy component domestically produced and sold by a manufacturer. And in many cases, the credit varies by eligible component and it's multiplied by the number of units produced by the taxpayer that were sold that year. It's also a non-competitive refundable tax credit, which is particularly meaningful for small businesses and startups looking for ways to grow their operations and um, really deepen their work in this space. Next slide, please. Okay, vehicles. Now this of course is a major area of opportunity, not only for new investment and decarbonization, but a significant opportunity for small businesses. The Inflation Reduction Act puts in place a comprehensive set of incentives to spur growth of America's clean vehicle market, including incentives for new and used commercial clean vehicles. So I'll highlight two specific credits on this slide. First, the commercial clean vehicle credit, known as 45W, which provides up to $40,000 per vehicle for heavy duty vehicles used by businesses such as buses and trucks. So Senator Markey made some great examples at the beginning of this webinar, whether you're a bakery or a landscaping company, if you're any type of small business that um, has a fleet need, this credit could be for you. Especially those who are operating in urban areas where your employees might be making frequent stops, where you might be idling quite a bit. Um, I really encourage you to think about this tax credit as you're thinking about updating your own fleet needs. And then there's the 30C credit. This is a tax credit for refueling and recharging infrastructure in rural areas. Um, it provides up to 30% off the cost of the charger to businesses in low-income communities and non-urban areas. This, of course, will make it more affordable to install EV charging infrastructure and increase access to EV charging in underserved communities. Now, this is important. Earlier this year, Treasury did confirm that the tax credit would be available to approximately two-thirds of Americans. So this is a huge opportunity for small businesses operating in the EV charging space, or that might potentially have an incentive to build out EV charging within their business model. Um, this credit will help build on the progress from the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, and again, this infrastructure will help support those clean vehicle fleets uh, that you would otherwise be able to claim with an incentive through 45W. Next slide. So next I'll turn to energy efficiency, which also brings me um, to the point, or to the great partnership between the Small Business Association and Treasury. And of course, you'll be hearing from a David at the SBA momentarily. The first two provisions listed, the Energy Efficient Home Improvement Credit, known as 25C, and the Residential Clean Energy Credit 25D, are actually consumer credits for energy efficiency improvements and the purchase of clean energy equipment, respectively. Now, Treasury has partnered with the SBA on developing materials for small and mid-sized contractors and developers who are actually providing the equipment or service relevant to these credits so that those small businesses may be more knowledgeable when it comes to talking to prospective clients. Many of these resources are on SBA's newly launched Invest in America Hub, which I know David here will share more information about in just a moment. So as communities around the United States implement solutions to housing shortages, building developers, owners, and operators well, they have all these new or expanded tools created by the Inflation Reduction Act, historic investments to reduce costs for some of the most important aspects of residential buildings. And a lot of that can also be found with the new Energy Efficient Home Credit, 45L, or the Energy Efficient Building Seduction, known as 179D. So whether it's building new, sustainably reconstructing, or rehabilitating existing multifamily residential buildings, Developers and contractors may now be eligible for several building related tax incentives and other financing tools that will ultimately help home homeowners and renters cut energy costs, uh, like the Senator was talking about. And at the same time, these incentives will help make buildings more efficient, more climate resilient, and less carbon intensive. So taken together, these provisions will help households save on their energy costs while growing small businesses all across America. Next slide, please. Okay, so the final set of incentives, which I'll just briefly touch on, is fuels and carbon capture. And within this category, I would highlight new incentives to help scale emerging technologies. For example, the Inflation Reduction Act includes a new credit for producing clean hydrogen, which holds considerable promise as a clean fuel to help decarbonize a range of industries, especially hard to abate manufacturing and transportation sectors. Next slide, please. In addition to the underlying tax credits I've been reviewing today, the inflation reduction also includes cross-cutting provisions to advance key policy goals. And this is really important because the tax provisions you see on this slide have the ability to greatly impact and increase the amount of incentive that you receive. An important policy objective 
embedded in the IRA is equity and economic opportunity. Nicole did a great job talking about um, what her organization is doing in Massachusetts. And as we know, the impacts of climate change are highly unequal, with the cost of extreme weather often falling on those least equipped to cope. At the same time, we know there are communities that have borne the brunt of legacy pollution, while also depending on the energy sector for a large share of local economic activity. So as we build this new clean energy economy, we need to ensure that those communities are not overlooked or left behind. We need to make sure that our clean energy supply chain is inclusive and diverse and representative of so many taxpayers all across the country. So the law includes two place-based bonus credits, one for energy communities and the other for low-income communities to help drive investment in really targeted areas. And this will help ensure that communities most exposed to the potential cost of the clean energy transition are poised to benefit from the economic potential it creates. And for many of the clean energy tax incentives, the IRA also includes labor standards that must be met to qualify for increased incentive amounts. And this will support the creation of good paying jobs and expand economic opportunity for workers, specifically to maximize many of the available clean energy tax incentives. Firms will need to pay workers a prevailing wage as defined by the Department of Labor Standards and employ a certain number of apprentices from registered apprenticeship programs. Treasury and the Biden administration believe it is absolutely imperative workers see the benefits of the clean energy economy that they are building and the prevailing wage and apprenticeship provisions are absolutely key to that objective. Finally, I would also note the domestic content bonus for clean energy projects and facilities claiming the production or investment tax credits that meet certain sourcing requirements. This bonus will help advance the goals of supply chain resilience that I discussed earlier in connection with the manufacturing incentives. At the same time, businesses seeking to claim the production or investment tax credits are not precluded from sourcing elsewhere. Domestic content receives a bonus, but that is not a requirement for business. So, I realize this is a lot of information to digest, and it was all very different and applicable in different ways. And that's okay. Uh, fortunately, we have a series of resources available um, as you plan ahead for next filing season. And uh, for those of you who, who are unaware, this was the first tax filing season, the one that just concluded that these credits were actually available to claim. So this is still very new. If you're coming into this not having much background in these provisions, you're coming into this conversation at the perfect time. Um, so with this tax filing season largely behind us, and I'm sure many of you on the call, I'm hoping that this broad overview uh, helps provide some context as you plan ahead for next year. Uh, and with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to uh, my colleague, David, at the Small Business Administration. Rachel, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Rachel, for that presentation and for your and the team at Treasury's partnership on the Investing in America uh, agenda. Um, it's been great to collaborate with you on this issue of helping make sure small businesses are in the driver's seat implementing all of these um, reforms for the U.S. economy. All right. So, um, SBA's Investing in America Small Business Hub. SBA.gov slash IIA hub. We'll get into it in a little bit. But as Rachel previewed, this is uh, the go-to Location, if you're looking for information on how small business can participate uh, across a range of new investments. Um, before we get started, I also wanted to recognize and thank Senator Markey uh, and your staff. Thank you so much for your leadership on small business issues, on climate issues, and where they intersect. Um, as a member of the Senate Small Business Committee, you've been a champion um, in these areas for uh, uh, so many years, and especially on, for example, the SBIR program that SBA runs, um, and which you know funds so many of the climate innovations, uh, many of which occur uh, in Massachusetts. Also, just a quick, uh, shout out to SBA's Massachusetts District Director, Bob Nelson. Bob, you and your team um, are first rate. Appreciate everything you're doing uh, to help small businesses in Massachusetts. And uh, if you haven't, those folks on the call, if you haven't connected with Bob and the team, uh, please do. He's got a wealth of knowledge and information um, on how to help small businesses launch and grow in Massachusetts. All right, let's jump into the first slide. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so the um, IIA hub on SBA.gov um, essentially captures 
what are the growth and market opportunities for small businesses that stem uniquely from recently enacted legislation, including the American Rescue Plan, Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, Chips and Science Act, and Inflation Reduction Act. Um, together, these pieces of legislation um, reflect a shift in the U.S. economy and uh, growth in key sectors where small businesses are uniquely positioned to grow. Uh, from SBA's perspective, our mission to ensure the strength of small businesses, we want to make sure that small businesses are on the leading edge of the changes in these sectors. As we've seen before, oftentimes big businesses, when there's a shift in the economy, are ready to go. Um, when the dollars hit the ground, we want to make sure small businesses are ready to go grow as well. Uh, there's so many benefits to small businesses participating in this growth. Uh, they hire local, they keep wealth in local communities, and they ensure robust competitiveness in the economy. Um, let's go on to the next slide. There's a lot of money uh, about to come or that is already underway uh, that's available to small businesses. 1.8 trillion by our estimate across the infrastructure law, IRA and Chips and Science Act. And to Rachel's point and to Senator Markey's point, these aren't opportunities just for quote unquote clean tech companies or those that consider themselves climate businesses. They occur in so many sectors across the economy. We estimate there are 200,000 or so residential building constructor uh, construction small businesses, about 230,000 small manufacturers, 300,000 rural small businesses, 250,000 small businesses engaging in new R&D who could potentially uh, benefit from some of these investments. Um, take just a single family home in the United States. That home itself may represent up to $25,000 in potential federal subsidy when it comes to the upgrading of the energy efficiency of that property when you add up the Treasury and Department of Energy opportunities. That money is an opportunity for small businesses that can perform work in that house um, to gain access to new business and growth. And then if you look at the government contracting opportunities across the state, local, and federal level, across all of these bills, you have up to 50 billion in government contracts that small businesses could comp potentially compete for and win. Next slide. Uh, on the IIA hub, we are focusing um, by area and building on three areas that we've already launched on the hub. These are the first three where you can go now and find detailed information for your business. Uh, manufacturing, home repair and construction, and then government contracting and subcontracting. subcontracting. Uh, to come uh, in the coming weeks, we will have materials focused on vehicle fleets. As Rachel um, discussed, there are huge opportunities there on businesses doing uh, research and development, and um, including uh, a number of the other tax credit opportunities in the energy space. Uh, rural businesses is the last category. Um, okay, next slide. Let's start with manufacturing. Um, there are the tax credits um, previously discussed offered by Treasury. There are also opportunities coming not just from tax incentives, but from grant programs um, funded by the Department of Energy. Uh, some of you may have um, encountered before the industrial assessment centers uh, that have existed for some time that small businesses can go to and get a free audit of their facility to identify opportunities to upgrade the energy efficiency of that facility. Um, there are new investments in that program from the legislation that allow you to not only get no cost assessments, but also to apply for a grant. Uh, that's right, a grant, not just a loan, um, for your small business to implement the upgrades that are recommended by the um, assessment center. Uh, those loans can be, up, I'm sorry, those grants can be up to $300,000. Uh, we've got information on SBI.gov, but also um, ideas on how to help you get there. For example, 
uh, the implementation grants do require a uh, match by the business. So if you're going to get $200,000 to make energy efficient upgrades in your facility, you've got to bring another $200,000 to the table. One eligible source of that uh, match money is an SBA loan. Uh, in particular, a 7A loan, which is our core general business loan program, um, you can take out in order to match the grant you're getting from DOE. Uh, and so we've got information on how you can explore that so that that match is not a barrier to your small business applying for these grants from the Department of Energy. Um, one final note on this, these are available now. This is not a preview. You can go to the IAC program page and start applying. Um, next slide. This is a focus area where we are pleased to be collaborating with Treasury, um, home repair and, and construction. As mentioned, the up to $25,000 in opportunity. It's a mix of the home energy rebates coming from the Department of Energy and the um, tax credits um, offered by the IRS. Start with the rebate side. Um, this is a program administered by Department of Energy through uh, state energy offices. Uh, states are now finalizing their plans and their state specific rules that will be going online in the coming months. So these are not available right now, but it's a good time to get acquainted with this program and get ready. As we mentioned, we want small businesses to be ready to go once the um, once the dollars are available. When you add these together, up to 22,000 in rebates for customers who purchase energy efficient appliances or home energy upgrades. There are income limitations to be aware of. Um, and uh, it's important to keep tabs on your state energy office to be aware of what the state specific rules are. States are going to require that businesses get certified uh, within their program in advance of completing projects so that they are deemed eligible to receive the rebate for the project. Uh, the home energy tax credits, uh, those are the currently available um, tax credit uh, that includes um, both, um, I'm sorry, for, for investments um, in homes claimed by the homeowner, uh, but that represent a market opportunity for small businesses. And we have fact sheets both for the business and for the homeowners um, that you can access on the site. Uh, next slide. Government contracting and subcontracting. Um, huge opportunities for small businesses to do business with the government um, at the federal, state, and local level. Um, what we have here are a set of resources to help you track where are the co contracts being awarded? Where does it make sense for my business to go after contracts? Maybe you're registered and participate in federal contracting, but you haven't done so at the state level. Uh, maybe it's the other way around. But um, right now, there's a surge really in contracting opportunities as, at the state level as states move to implement bipartisan infrastructure law um, across uh, different sectors of their economy. Uh, so encourage you to visit the hub and look at and, and use it as a source for state procurement um, based opportunities to track contracts at the federal level and to find ways to get technical assistance um, on becoming or growing as a government contractor. Uh, next slide. Just double click on one of those bipartisan infrastructure law opportunities. High speed internet investments represent one of the most um, uh, encouraging areas for small business contracting opportunities. In total, there's 42 billion um, in high speed internet deployment, installation, and implementation contract opportunities for small businesses um, under the broadband equity access and deployment program. Um, these are available through your local, uh, through, through your state's agency that's working to deploy the funds. Um, 
and you can access the Internet for All page, um, selecting your state to find out status of different contracting opportunities locally. Next slide. Just a little bit more on the SBA hub. Uh, what you will find there are program overviews that provide context of what the program is, when it's running, when the dollars are hitting the ground, and what the opportunities are for small businesses. How to guides that are designed specifically for small business. So if you're a chamber of commerce, for example, you may find that useful to share with your members. Um, there also is specific information on SBA resources and programs to help small businesses grow or access the capital they need to meet these market opportunities. Um, and we think that's particularly important in this environment. If you're a government contractor that needs to scale in order to perform on more contracts, if you are a door window installer that now sees an opportunity to do um, more projects, to hire more workers to do them, but you need more working capital to get it done, we can help you get a loan that meets your needs. If you need technical assistance um, to help you figure out all of the challenges that come with growing your business, um, we can connect you with the right Small Business Development Center, Women's, um, Women's Business Center, SCORE mentor, or other res resource partner that, that meets your needs as a small business. Uh, next slide. Uh, already covered some of this, but just to hit on a few more, um, the 7A loan program, uh, this un up to $500,000 reflects uh, SBA's small loan size category, where you can get approved for a loan uh, on the speedier end. Um, you can also get a loan over 500000 actually up to $5 million. Uh, for projects, it just varies kind of which which sub product you're going to be routed into um, uh, for that loan. Um, we also have the long term fixed rate financing through the 504 loan program. This is great for uh, for buildings, for commercial real estate, and for equipment if you're looking to make a big purchase there. Um, we also have surety bonds that can help with contracting in particular. If you see an opportunity to do contracting with the federal government that you haven't done before, uh, we have a variety of certification problems that can help you stand out for and compete for contracts as a small business, whether you're veteran owned, if you have employees in a hub zone, uh, if you're women owned, rural, et cetera. Opportunities for coaching and training, including a variety of free mentorship opportunities through our resource partners. Um, and then finally, if you're looking for equity capital or other forms of private investment, we have our small business um, investment company program uh, as another source of capital. Uh, finally, uh, just again to point to our fantastic Massachusetts district office run by Bob Nelson, get in touch with them um, if there's anything that wasn't answered here or you're just looking to get connected with the SBA network in your state. Thanks, everyone. Oh, let's go to the one last slide where you can see oh, if it's down already, that's OK. It just had the link to SBA.gov slash IIA hub where you can find more about about all of this. Thank you. Thanks, David. Yep, we got it pulled up. So if folks want to uh, use the QR code there on the screen um, and we'll also be sure to send over all these wonderful links after the presentation. And our, my colleague Shade has also been putting these links in the chat as well to grab them in real time right now. Um, but thanks so much, David. Thank you, Rachel. And thank you, Nicole.